Are you concerned about all this corruption being misgendered as conspiracies? Well, don't you worry. Sit back, relax, and join in the conversation as we talk with today's guest. Welcome to another LSB Film Productions podcast with your host, Chris Brooks. Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I've got an amazing guest. I've been watching all his stuff today to try and catch up to speed, but there's just so much of it that it's it's a losing battle. So I'm so honoured to have Russell hyphen J colon gold on the show with me. Um, a lot of you will probably know him from the brilliant documentary that was put together, The Last Flag Standing. Um, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. It's an honor to be here and to be, you know, to give closure to your audience on some of the wonderful things that have been created. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Take it away. <laughs> I want to be educated. <laughs> oh, well, I'd, I'd like to start first uh, to what everybody has, you know, when we come get docked on this earth space banking, and that is our birth certificate. Mm -hmm. And un And unfortunately, this birth certificate has been used as a collateral for surety for underwritings for our whole lives um, from the government using for you know for their qsip numbers and for their bankings on the backside to our ability just to go get an education to go to the doctor's office to get a driver's license or a passport this concept of this birth certificate has been used to to control the the way we mo can move around and so I took a look at that about 29 years ago, and I really uh, took an in-depth look at this uh, concept of shipping. And as I as I started breaking down the concepts of shipping from the, my local community and took it into the state level, or and then the national level, and then the global level, I, I became cognizant that everything was a shipping matter of control. Mm -hmm. And as I looked at that. I realized, became cognizant about the grammar and how grammar was used as a means in those shipping constructs to control communication about what's being articulated. And so I st started on a long journey of studying words and how words get brought together through syntax, order of operation of breaking words down, mm -hmm. looking at prefixes and suffixes to words. And please keep in mind that not all words are the same in other languages. And so yeah, we have to use true, yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, it's it's true. So mm -hmm. we, I, I use if I'm using a word that's not the same in in Portuguese and maybe it's not the same in English, I look at the synonym to best correlate to maintain the same volition of thought, and I use a synonym to control that that word. But uh, yeah, I started looking at prefixes and suffixes and prefixes. What the, the prefix that comes in front of the, the root word, right, and okay. then the su the the suffix is like your past tense or they'll use an L Y like um, um, verily or, you know, with an L Y at the end of the end of the word. And that creates an adverb. I've, I've figured out that all words that end in L Y when you look at them, they're actually ad adverbs. And so, and so, I mean, uh, who, who to know? I didn't know. My, right? my daughter's an adverb. Her name's Lily. <laughs> yeah, L-Y, right? Yeah. And so when, when you look at the at L-I, so I changed that out to L-I to take it out of the adverb scenario. And so there's different things that I did to create a, a position where we had a communication forum where it was a now space scenario because I, I know that I can only be here now Mm -hmm. And I only benefit and, and, and have things happen to me now. Uh, I never can see the future because that's someone else's paradigm. I can only live within the paradigm of the now space. I could, you know, the thought consciousness that's in my now space. Uh, I can create performances now that affect myself when I get in another space that they might may call the future, but when I get there, it's still now. So the right? present, really, oh, isn't it? The present. Uh, well, pre means no, right? As a prefix to a word, okay. and so you could say. And so you, I studied. I learned that, like when you go to a bank, like most people don't realize that you do a deposit, but the prefix de means to separate from, and so you separate mm -hmm. from what your deposit, and then the bank turns around and gives you a receipt, but the prefix re 
is a particle of negation. What's negation mean? No. Mm -hmm. So they give you not they give you nothing back. So, so it, you separate. It really is that words are spells. spells. It, the, the, it's a spelling. Yes, it's a. So when you go to a bank and you do your deposit, you separate yourself from your position, and then they give you a receipt, give you nothing back, so you can't verify that you left anything there because re means no. The banks are playing a word game on you. Mm -hmm. And it's all these spells and all these things. And, you know, it, it took me down a fascinating trail of studying these prefixes and suffixes. And then I got to, into figuring out uh, how I do my name in cursive writing. They say, only write your name in cursive writing. And then when you get into cursive, it took, took me into a lot of different negative words that didn't have application or have not application, but have a meaning mm -hmm. for me to have a value now. So I got out of that and I, I created what's called a claim of the life system where I claimed my life through claiming the protocols of maritime contract, which means I had a flag, I had a postage. I claimed my biometrics and I claim myself to be there now. And I set up a, a parallel system and it, you know, it, it took a long time to put together. And there was a lot of people that definitely gave aid in that journey as well. A lot have fallen off to the side. Some didn't comply with contract and spun others up. It's, it's been a real interesting thing for me to be a witness of and participate with. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm very thankful for my journey because it really took me into finding myself and really being at peace with myself in a world of chaos and a, a world of things. You know, and unfortunately, the banks you know, or the governments, to me, it's like going to Disneyland, right? You have somebody there in a costume. And, paradise. And, yeah, yeah. And they're sitting there and they're waving their hands saying, we're here, we're here, we're here. <clears throat> you know, come to us, come to us. <clears throat> file your paperwork, file your, your documents. And then you won't hear back from them for so long. And they, they'll always breach their timelines now because the authorizations for governments ended in 1999 and 2001 at the Universal Postal Union globally where they created a fake paradigm and have used these timelines and this grammar to hold the people at bay. And so it's really unfortunate that they've used the technology that I learned and taught the banks and taught the people that run the banks. And then they use that against the general public. And the public's never the wiser. They're still thinking they're at Disneyland, right? Waving their hand and in their contracts. And there's actually nobody there but a digital clipboard so to speak so when you take your documents to the bank what does the banks do or do the courts do they scan your documents into their data systems and they shred your documents right so they don't have a paper trail and when i did all the research on the court systems globally the state departments your mi6s your fumbling bumbling idiots over here in the u.s all the different clown agencies that are out there I became cognizant that it's all the same. All of the hubs for all the databases and the multi-domain functions are controlled by the cyberspace programs for the military of those countries. And so no matter who you are or where you file, it goes into this multi-function domain that is controlled by the military's psychological warfare departments globally. So... That doesn't do very good for the people because if you look at the mottos of the psychological warfare departments, the mottos of the psychological warfare departments, when you graduate, you, you go through the motto, and the motto is they wage war through deception. Yeah. Now think about that. We've been it was, deceived. It was 9-11 that woke me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nine a nine eleven. You know, we have all these brilliant men in our U.S. military that could not figure out that it was an attack on our own people, mm -hmm. put on by very nefarious people. Of course, they've got their fake president sitting in a in a classroom full of children. Oh, oh, really? Oh, 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 acting very innocent. And you got, of course, you got our brain. They've well all done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bravo. The Academy Award should be going that direction. Absolutely. You know what I, you know what I mean? So, you know, when you look at it and then, you know, you look at the U.S. military and the things that they've done around the world in the name of democracy, which is all just a lie. Yeah, of course and it's, 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 
it's just nonsensical. And, you know, they're killing our, our men and women of other countries, children of other countries, and the things that are going on. Only a fool rushes to war yeah. because they don't have the ability to communicate, put their needs on the table, and write it in a manner that it means what it says and says what it means now. And so there's no boundary lines for consequences because nobody's accountable for anything they're doing because they're using the grammar to spin definitions on words so that they can make it mean an endless amount of things, mm. but securing the people, securing the, you know, being a servant for we the people. So it's been a real battle just watching how they've used the grammar that's been given. And I, I hopefully people can wake up. You know, I feel that they are think good people. I believe that there's great people everywhere. Mm. We've been we've been duped by the, the psychological warfares that have been placed upon us for years. And it's the militaries of our country, worlds that are running uh, running this against each country, right? It's just not here in the U.S. It's in every country, no matter where I'm you sorry, are. Yeah. It's it's the military in control of that country. And it's the shareholders and the military industrial complexes behind that that uh, unfortunately <clears throat> keep guys like me, you know, subdued and keep 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 our audiences down as best they can uh, because, you know, as soon as people find out the truth, people are looking for truthfulness. And I believe that there are great hearts and minds in the people of the world. And I know we can come together and defeat this, but the AI has been put itself in a position to where that there are no humans now making decisions or choices for we, the people, which is a very scary thought. All in so, you, so you so, think we're at that stage already? You think AI or already running the show guarantee you yeah guarantee you yeah we'll go in in our country here in the u.s like you have the department of justice so their database sits with the fumbling bumbling idiots mm. and the fumbling bumbling idiots sit with homeland security was an adjective pronoun so fat pigs might as well just call them fat pigs so you got the fat pigs which is homeland security right homeland's an adjective so i can place a value on it right i'll call it fat Mm -hmm. Or I can change my mind. I could call it a pencil, right? But I like calling them fat pigs, right? Homeland Security, adjective it's, pronouns. It's fitting. It, it's fitting. I can, you can make any word up you want. It's just adjectives. Doesn't really mean <laughs> it. Doesn't, doesn't really say anything. It's just, <laughs> no. an, just someone's color, colorful opinion. So if I want to value it as a fat pig, as an adjective pronoun, a Homeland Security, I could call it a fat pig. Right. Fumbling, bumbling idiots. The same thing. Right. I can place value to anything because there's no there's no claim on what it is because there's no procedure to lock in the nouns. Mm. If you look on your clock right now, what does your clock say on your time? About quarter past nine at night. A quarter past. And then there's a colon between your in, between your nouns, between your numbers. What the the dashes? Yeah, 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 yeah yeah, 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 yeah. If you were to take those out, you would lose subject matter control of what that meaning was. It would no longer mean time to you. It'd be a number, or a series of numbers, yeah, yeah. or a yeah. numbers number in a space. Same thing with numbers. If numbers are nouns and places and locations are nouns, what's Homeland Security? The same thing. A fat pig, right? Mm. So, you know, they advertise it, might as well place a value to it. It's no big deal, right? It's not that big of a deal once you comprehend how the word game goes. Unfortunately for the American people, in December of 2000, no, wait, in August of 2004, I met with the Deputy Director of Homeland Security, who told me Homeland Security in Washington, D.C., who told me Homeland Security had zero authorization to exist as a, as a corporation. But the American people were such pussies, they were going to buy into it. And mm. those were their words. Oh, those were their words, not mine. You know, not my words, their, their words. And mm. today we, we, we see it every, day, every space we travel. We're going through equipment where they're scanning and imprinting our bodies with their technology. Who, and last time I went through there, the guy from Homeland Security goes, yeah, we don't even know what's in this technology we're imprinting people with. This was the homeless. This was a fat pig telling me this. I mean, that is so scary, though, isn't it? It's such a scary thought that we've got these people. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a scary thought. But they're not controlled by anything except what's on their computer screen. Mm. Again, back to what's in control of their computer screens, the database, the the the, the, the domain functions, the, the all these all these 
data gathering centers that are controlled by trigger mechanisms of algorithms of AI systems that are put in place. So who's making the decision? Exactly. Not us. Not, no. Mankind is no longer in, in charge of his decision making. And this is where I brought in the claim of life system to put us back in charge of our own lives to where we have a paper trail of forensics for holding accountability and culpability to the performance of service that we're needing for our lives. Hmm. And so it's, it's, it's taken me 30 years to figure this all out and the shipping applications on a global level. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a lot to go through and a lot to cover in a short period of time. But uh, um, were there topics on the topics that you wanted to discuss? No, that's, that's wicked. My mind's already blown. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's really, yeah, it's, it's so fascinating and it is a lot to take in. But, uh... It is a lot. It, yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely involved in a communication war because we have no closure of what we're trying to articulate. If I ask you, if I ask you, what does two plus two equal four? Well, you can't actually answer that because T O plus T O doesn't equal F O R, no. or T W or T W O plus T O doesn't equal F O R E. Point being, it has to be written down so we can now may have a, a, make sense a closure. Of it. Yeah, yeah, make sense of it, right? If we don't have procedure, so if I ask you another question. What's the answer to four plus four divided by four? Well, one would See, say zero, but. Uh, well, you divide first, right? Order of operation. So four divided by four is one plus four is the answer is five. Okay. So if you, so if you don't have your order of operation correct, you're going to get the wrong answer. Mm. So what it's showing you here, just like on your time earlier, if you don't have a procedure in place, that we can all agree on to maintain the same volition of what we're trying to articulate, we're going to lose control of our subject matter and you're going to end up a fat pig, right? Yeah. You don't want to end up a fat pig. That's like one of the last things you want to end up as. Well, I right? hate to say it, but um, <laughs> I'm well, well, the Well, I mean, I'm just metaphorically speaking. I know, I'm not I know. saying, hey, I'm not saying if someone wants to be large, by all so, means, that's so, on So them. what would, what is your what is your opinion then of Elon Musk? Do you have have never met, uh, I've, I've, I've never met the man, so it's very difficult to comment on him. I will say that I met his financiers from the House of Jordan, mm -hmm. and they told, they told me a lot of things about Elon Musk that were a little bit concerning, to say the least. But until I hear it coming out of his, uh, out of his own mouth and had a conversation with him, I don't want to be judgmental about Elon no, no, Musk no. or anyone. And no. I, I, I just don't want to make comments about that. But I could say that, you know, from oh he's got a lot on his plate and he's got a lot of classified technology that he's dealing with but like he's not his money right his money comes from the house mm -hmm. of jordan so you have to realize where he comes from and then realize really what you're looking at i do know that some of my friends that are very brilliant scientists have given a lot of brine technology for battery tech for for the salts conversion of salts to their corporate to his corporation but his main money maker isn't uh, space. All the space expeditions he does, he makes his money uh, tunneling underground with his nuclear tunneling systems. That's where his real money is made. That's his only profit company that he has is tunneling underground. So when he wants to go to Mars, he's got to go down and to the left. Okay, that's fair. No, that's a fair comment. So would you uh, would you say that what we're in now i know you said it's like a, a simulation but are we in a spiritual war yes and you have the choice to make choices based upon the decisions that you make and there are choices of of they would call it god and they, some would call it the devil some would call it good and evil there's a lot of different applications for it I try to stay out of that because I'm trying to manifest positivity and positive performance for my fellow mankind. So I, I know I'm in the, you know, on the side of, you know, I would call it God's will if, 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 if that's what people want to call it. But I don't want to push theology on mankind because everybody has to make their own choices. Mm. And I really feel that from the neutrality of what I'm said doing, 
that I stay in a position of neutrality because I could have a lot. I've had a lot of negative people and before that COVID hit. We had a lot of the top um, financiers of the world would use learn the technology. So we had a lot of negative people using this technology to undermine the good and national security of, of the people of different countries. And so we had a lot of bad people. Uh, my business partner, he was a bad guy, right? David Eiffel and Colin Miller, he worked with the Rothschilds and the Clintons. And, you know, he was a bad guy. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know these things when I got involved with him. And then, as I got further in, I became cognizant of that. And then I locked David away from his own technology in 2006, so he couldn't hurt anybody anymore. Of course, the CIA used that to spin other people up around the world and other variations, and to keep them going to undermine truth and correctness. Of course, at all times, but that's okay. It doesn't bother me because truth wins in the end. And you know. God or whatever you want to call that goodness wins because goodness is goodness. Righteousness is righteousness. Fairness is fairness. Truth is a perspective based upon your perspective position of what you're trying to get done. Absolutely. So truth is all truth can only be an opinion and you're going to know people by their performances. If they choose to do good or if they choose to do evil with the technologies that they built, you know, I look out and that's why I don't make comments about guys like Elon Musk. Because we're going to know the people by their performances. Or their, do their performances create? Uh, know them by their uh, actions. Yes, always, always. So I don't want to be judgmental. I've never had a conversation with Elon Musk, yeah. just because the people that fund him. And, you know. He no, just, I mean, he just, to be fair, a, the, only, a gopher. the only reason why I, I brought up Elon Musk is because he has been on record quite a few times saying that AI is something that we need to be weary of you know it, it's yeah dangerous. and he, he, at the same he, time he's trying to implant people's brains with <laughs> you know that is the goal yes and so that is that is part of the you know with the 5g and the graphene oxide and vaccinating people that all that comes into play there and he probably can't say a lot of things that he could normally say because he's stuck down to fiction grammar contracts and you got to remember he's using other people's money so he, he's got to do what they say yeah. He can't. He can't create. He can't create his own monetary system, or he he doesn't have the authorization to create it in the now space. Let's just say that. So he has all that money, but I can't think of. Oh, I couldn't oh. imagine living like that. Under well, you know, people in a box. Yeah. Well, they give him a lot of freedom, and they tell him he's rich. Doesn't mean that that value has any money. No, they all true. know it's written with fictitious grammar, and the banks mean nothing. And they're, mm. you know, it's just a perspective. And you know, and, and this is how they keep governments going: is that you know, the people think that the governments are still valid, right? And so they, they, they but they can't figure out why the borders are open and anybody can come through. Huh? Go figure. Right. And if, the thing is, a, when when you are awake to it, it's so obvious and it's so. You know, when you before I woke up, say nine eleven, then you do follow this. Oh, the government are there to bring about order, and they they're there to protect you. But once once that veil is lifted, what? And I suppose it's like what David Icke says. I don't know what your opinion on him is, but like he said, when you see the journey, when you know what the when when you know what the where the destination is you can spot the clues along the journey you can you know you're gonna you're gonna know people if they're kind to you if they give you full closure honesty and then allow people you know we live in a feudalistic system unfortunately it's been that that way a long time so how does one step into neutrality and, and be a sovereign in a theater of such anger and and war against us mm -hmm. in every fight of our lives, you know? And so I've chosen to look at it from a corporate grammar position to make words mean what they say and say what they mean in, in a now tense scenario. That's much different than anyone on the planet. Everyone always is trying to claim sovereignty using past tense and future tense words mm -hmm. on their contracts. So they're trying to check out of a fiction with and still implicating another fiction, yeah. right? Because they have they're, no they're order. Swap, they're swapping one word of jurisdiction for another. 
correct correct yeah. and and so and so they're the venue that they're creating is the venue that they get so mm -hmm. i'm seeing a world where a fiction no matter what it is destroys fiction and kills fiction all right because fiction is a lie right it's, it's a fable it's something that is not there mm -hmm. so if you're writing in a grammar that is positioned you out of the now space does your contract or your documents do they have any validity now I would say, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, I would say no, they don't. If if you're not writing in the in the present, it, it, not the present. Ah, oh, so my field. If you're not the, writing. The, the, <laughs> writing in and out, but we're so tricked, you know. And everybody, everybody's so tricked by it. And then, you know, there's not a lot of publicity about what we're doing at for the claim of the life dot com. But there's great great training portals that we've set up with teachers on all continents that come in and teach people, you know, and share with them concepts, you know, word of lot, a lot of it's word of mouth. It's very difficult because the systems are all controlled by the AI. So we have a different approach now because of the AI system control on the, where you think you would go to court to file before. Well, we can, now there's technology in place in the last couple of weeks that uh, bypasses all that. Right. So, so we have, you know, I don't want to give too much here, but we have a whole, different set of standards now that can be put into place that really give you make you into more of a, uh, the the word is not programmer but more of a controller okay. uh, um, doc docketing and documenting your own spatial cognition as you navigate your now space and so there's things now that are in place where we where we can bypass all the fable of going to see mickey mouse at the courthouse or the bank to where we, we simply do controlling mechanisms in the data centers to now uplink and erase things that you want or don't want. No, that, that makes sense. I think that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it must make sense. Yeah, it makes sense because you're saying that. I just, it, yeah, I'm just trying to you know, Yeah, well, process. just think if, if AI controls where you go to file, and so when you show up to file, they scan your documents in globally. They shred your documents, get rid of the paper trail, and they put everything on their computer screen, and their computer screen is controlled by the Army Psychological Warfare Department of your country, the, the PSYOP boys, uh, where's, and that is controlled by another hub, and then you don't have to go down to Mickey Mouse land anymore and see them. You just go there and put imprint and erase and fix that data. Will the people down in Mickey Mouse land ever see you again? No. No, oh, because they don't know you exist because they only listen to their screen because they can't make decisions for themselves. They've made a system that's not countable to think. So when it's not countable to think because it has no detective reasoning capacity because it's been not taught that for a long time, right? So when you've been not taught to be countable, when you've not been caught, been taught the difference between correct, correct and, and bad, right and wrong, god and satan whatever the heck you want to call that spiritual application and you have a blurred line that there then why why in the world would you would you go there right well why would you go to a courthouse that has has to listen to its computer screen it has no choice right the judge judge has the judge has this judge's lexus it's got to punch up its case file and the algorithm tells it what to do based upon all the Meta tag data over here, which is how much money is in this count, or how much is here, how much is there, how much can we steal, how much can we stonewall? No, we got to make sure the people don't get anything because we're at war with the people when we get here. When they get here, you know, you know that they know they don't know what's up. They just have to follow the Earth space banking dimension, which is to comply with the AI trigger mechanism set up by the psychological warfare departments for each country. So it's all so, so it's all compartmentalized, and so everyone just thinks yes. they're doing something, and really they're they're hanging themselves, really, aren't they? They yeah, they just don't comprehend that it's been given away. Mm. The right to think has been given away. There's no thinking capacity within any banks or governments worldwide because it's all been fraudulent based and fraudulent grammar and fraudulent monetary systems because the birth certificates are worthless. Because right? your birth certificates aren't worth anything anymore because there's no central banking systems in place anymore with valid now space grammar behind it for the enforcement of a contract. 
So they've used the quantum grammar to undermine the security of the people of the world, and that's not what I set up. I set it in reverse to use the grammar to make the banks more of a servicer for we, the people who have a posit with our position to control the seat of our lives. Right, okay. So make so kind of make you like the executor. Well, EX means no, right? So you want to be a cutor, right? So you got to okay. study prefixes and suffixes. Okay. You know, and this is where doing a little bit of work. I know people are lazy and a lot of people, do, but there are a lot of people that enjoy good study. Mm -hmm. Challenge. I challenge people to study prefixes and suffixes to words. And nine times out of ten, those prefixes will take you into a negative connotation of what it's actually trying to say. Okay. Could you talk to me a little bit about boxing? Oh, yeah, the laws of boxing, four-cornering. So in your f government styles manuals, mm -hmm. They will, in each country, and the styles manuals are the, the document, treaty documents through um, the um, Vienna Conventions that are the styles in which countries are going to communicate. So they'll have the plus sign, the minus signs, what a period means to stop a thought and sentence, what a question mark is to ask a question. All this has a global styles for communication, diphthongs, different accents, d different things that have different meanings. And it's up to the country, the nation, to publish that and publish it with other nations so nations can learn how to communicate together. Okay. Well, in your styles manuals in all countries, there will be the, the, the laws of four cornering or brackets. And anything in a box or a bracket is not on the page. There's no words there. It means to omit words between the brackets. So like in a contract where it says sign in within the box. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, on... so you, okay. it's not actually you left the you've left the jurisdiction of the content of what you're trying to articulate. That's why we, we put judges and judges boxes and juries and jury boxes so we the people don't have to consider anything they say. Right? Oh, yeah, so cool. we have to you so so it's actually in reverse. It's been set up for we the people, but we the people don't know how to articulate it because we've we've we believe that there's words actually coming out of the box. So you fence but them in essentially. They fence themselves in because right, they're not okay. really there because they're not really the government. It's a sovereign's world and it's your ability to navigate yourself through maritime contract. And this is what I've done for the people: I set up a ship's channel, a shipping lane for the citizens globally. To now look at a now space scenario where your postage is backed by hard assets. I have my own periodic tables, which have been published globally. Uh, and when I publish those, the National Security Agency, adjective, adjective, pronouns, a cup, saucer, and chair, came to visit me with me as long, uh, along with the Department of No Fence, pronoun, adverb, verb, Department mm -hmm. of Defense, as well as the, the CIA. And they grabbed me off the streets because I was the only person in the history of mankind to publish a now space periodic table. And I built it in a tetrahedron out of trilateral angles to navigate the molecular structure of matter. And uh, it's never been done in the history of mankind. I was the first, I did it in the court martialing, uh, court martial case, R period, R period, till the 385, till the 460, till the, till the 312, calling U period, S period. Uh, court marshalling of over 10,000 admirals and generals at the Pentagon when I went in to try to stop the Iraq war for genocide against the Iraqi people and genocide against the American people because there was actually not a U.S. president. As you know, mm. in 1999, the United States government ceased to exist when we came out of international bankruptcy. And you can look at the documentation of that in the Benjamin Franklin bank books. Uh, and go ahead and is, go is look at those. Is this around the same time that they'd done the Federal Reserve? Is that when they stopped? <laughs> Oh, back by gold. The well, the, the, uh, I forget who took the gold backing off the currencies. I think it was, I don't know who it was because it was all done in fiction grammar. And I was just documenting the bankruptcy of borrowing money of 1.6 million francs from France in 1775. So what I'm basing off of is 1775, the setting up of the United States government. And okay. they did that one year, one day, three day, three day rescission, one year, one day later, which they called July 4, 1776, Day of the Slaves, the day that they gave them a Bill of Rights, 
Bill's a pronoun, of is an adverb, making rights a verb, and they gave everybody a verb because that's what they had at the time. George Washington attempted to coin, and I've got documentation of his coin, the unity hyphen states of the America, and he tried to make America a noun on the money, and the people, because he was in bankruptcy of 1775, they told him he could not borrow, could not uh, coin factual now space and make America a, ver a noun. They had to make it a verb. So they had to say of America, making America a verb, because there's no such place as America as a verb. So they had to keep it in fiction. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they, they've known about the grammar for a long, long time. What they didn't know is uh, how to create the now space jurisdictions. And that's what I presented. And that's ex actually why I was contacted by the House of Jordan for Elon Musk is because they wanted my authorizations to have now space jurisdiction for their contracts for the things that they were going to do to the people. And I told them no. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not for them. It's for the people. Yeah, it's for absolutely. the people to control their now space and for the people to be in control of their own lives mm -hmm. because I love mankind and I, I love the people of the world and I want us to all get along and not be caught up in the psyops by the psychological warfare department that are waging wars against our lives, Kim trailing us and trying to hurt us in every aspect of our lives. It's not fair to we the people, and I wish us all the best as we fight this this tyranny and this AI system that is uh, attempting and making a try to um, to hurt us. So I no, wish absolutely. the people of the world the best. I love love y'all. What is the Vatican's um, input in all this? So the vac the Vatican <clears throat> because don't they own so the birth certificates? Uh, they did until I took them out on June 16th, 2003. I went into the Vatican. Um, I have a contract to run each bank military. They uh, actually left the Secretary of State's office room because they didn't have jurisdiction to be there. I, I had disqualified all the protocols. I'd mail myself around the world without a passport with my claim of the life and my, my shipping construct through my global postal union. And um, I was the first person and only person to get them to get up, leave all their postage stamps in the Secretary of State's office on the desk. And then I went around to Michael Sedano, or Angelo Sedano is what they call him. Michael's is the name. Uh, Angelo Sedano went around, sat in my chair because he had to vacate. And then I put all their stamps on my contract and did a, uh, a contract to make sure that the Vatican could not hurt the people, which they are continuing to do. Mm. But what they did on, on that, when that Pope died, is they moved the conclave to 11 days, not 10 days, vacating the continuance of evidence, therefore vacating everything that they had done. So it's just a fake. The Vatican is a fraudulent organization, 100% fiction. Anyone doing banking with the Vatican is engaged in fictitious grammar with fraudulent hallmarking and four-cornering going on their contracts, which says nothing and does nothing. Their money is not, and their banks are not worth anything anywhere not on Not worth the planet. paper it's written on. Not worth the paper it's written on, that's for sure. Yeah, it's a fraudulent organization. What they did in our country is they did, and where I learned about this was in the Montana Freeman case in the 1990s, the federal judge Burns stood up in the court case and said, you people can't see what you're doing, and everybody laughed at him. But when you look at the definition of see, like S-E-E, a legal definition, it doesn't mean I see you, like a residual energy, X, Y, Z components. It means to look through the Pope's authorized jurisdiction of the papal diocese, right? Mm -hmm. And so they gave everybody their own C treaty, which is on their $1 bill, which is the all-seeing eye, playing a dirty little trick against the people here of the former United States. making Is that to do C with Freemasonry? Treaty. Well, Freemasonry, you got to remember, is a, is a very new concept. This is only a 200-year-old concept in the world. This is a lot of plagiarism coming out of the Sumerians, the Egyptians, and the Tartarians, and all the things that have been come before that. And so you got to remember, Freemasonry is a, just a very, eh, it's a very, 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 very new thing. Right? Very, eh, eh. You know, it's, just, it's just like not very smart, right? Those are people that actually run around. You know, and they're dealing with the, their widow's son and all the things that they want to deal with. And, oh, my gosh. What do, what do they, what do they uh, this, preach? Uh, not preach. What, what, are what they satanic? They are they satanic? Well, it's loyalty. What they're looking for is w what suckers do they got? Who can be the most loyal? And then it's a club. It's a club. You know, you join a club. 
And there are certain things that you go through through the club and you take certain oaths which say nothing because the oaths are written in fiction. And when you look at the, like the Jesuit oaths and some of the oaths, all the words on their oaths are italicized. All words italicized in contract are not on the page. That's also in your federal styles, Mario, under italics words. Anything italics on contract is actually a misspelled word. Wow. Yeah, so you got to study. The, it's, a, it's a procedure, right? It's a procedure. So what I'm looking at is the procedure of words and the procedure of how they come together. So to answer your question about the Freemasons, this is, this is a, a group of, of, of club members that have a society that they take pretty serious. Is that like the Club of Rome? Oh, well, clubs is pronoun of, of is an adverb making Rome a verb. There's no such thing as the Club of Rome because can you show me the verb location Rome anywhere on the planet? No. So why would you advertise unless you were like had something wrong in your head where you were mentally ill? Maybe some They call it notarded, right? You were notarded. They call it retarded. If you're a notard, then you say you're of Club of Rome, pronoun, adverb, verb, because there's no such thing. This is a fiction, again, another fable of delusion, right? But DE means no good either. It's illusion in someone's mind that thinks that you're at a pronoun, adverb, verb, Rome, because there's no location for Rome as a verb anywhere on the planet. So more of the fairy tales, more of the Disneyland sort of scenario where they've got us caught up thinking that it's something that we need to study and know about when there's no such thing. I can't help but think we were better off when we couldn't speak. <laughs> we, we actually when, were. When we were cavemen. And just made yes, noise. because we, well, we learned how to communicate. There, there, at that stage, we had to listen and hark to what was being articulated. So it raised our senses into a position so we could comprehend, uh, trying to comprehend. Mm. As we got further down in life, they gave us these prefixes and suffixes to words. And we were so desensitized that nobody, everybody lost scope on what it meant to comprehend what we were, what we were listening to or what we were trying to hear. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you're exactly right. We were better off as cavemen because our listening skills, the skills of listening and to hark on the mm -hmm. words and the, the, the expression of that or expression of that uh, expression. See, I, I move into negative words too. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing my best not to, right? And so to, to it was more instinctual. More, more, not in, because in is a preposition. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Now listen to this one. Go on then. In, it, in is a preposition, but when used as a prefix to a word is a particle of negation, which means no. So if you say investigation, you're actually saying no investigation. Is that like... Saying, is that like I've got a, a a friend who's been teaching me stuff as well, um, and he's saying like the word of, for example, means away from. So like the word of God actually means the word away from God. It's used as an adverb in that sense, but if it's of the, now you've made it a preposition, so you've changed the value of what it's trying to be articulated. Right. That's okay. called that's that's called parse to break a word down and then to put it into operation which is the syntax s y n t a x the syntaxing of a word which means that you're now putting it into a a form so that you and i can comprehend what the meaning of it is right okay. but if you but it, but it is correct on of away from that is correct okay good but it's when it's being used as an adverb but when it's being used as a preposition it's bringing it together in a now space scenario okay well thank you for clearing that up for me Yes. That was great. Now, with regards to the Pope, there's three Popes, isn't there? I might be going off on a tangent here. Yeah, yeah. go away. I'm you've got the with black, it all. You've got the Black Pope. And I'm asking yeah. you because I, I, I am ignorant to this. I just know that there's, I've just heard of three Popes. So I'm hoping sure. that you can educate me. There's no. the Black Pope, the White Pope, and the Grey Pope. But the Grey Pope is the one who's supposed to do all the kind of converse, conversing with the they have different reptilians or the Anunnaki or the non-humans. Well, here's what I would say about that. 
each one of those concepts have different clubs that they are in joinder with. Okay. So some will be like with Opus Dei, some will be like with the Blue Army, some it just depend I don't want to get into too much here, right? So it just depends on what club is in joinder with that concept of what you're saying. Okay. How, however, the authorization for them to see what they're doing ended on June 16th, 2003, thanks to yours. Truly. Truly. Yeah, true. Not Lee, because that's be an ad. Oh, yeah. Oh, for goodness sake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, mm. Yeah. And I, and I've, you know, they were pretty frustrated with me because I was, I, David was a bad guy with them, so the doors opened, but I, I was not one of them. So there was a lot of, uh, uh, they got their feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. They got your little feelings hurt. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is um, I don't want to say what's your opinion of, because you've already said that. You don't. <laughs> but with regards to, like, Donald Trump, is he is he a good guy, or is you he... know, you know we we know them by their fruits, and that's all I can say about that, right? So there are no presidents. That concept ended in 1999. I physically have never had a con conversation with Mr. Trump, so I don't want to say anything about that. I do know what a pronoun adverb verb isn't. That is. Uh, or an adjective pronoun, Operation Warp Speed. Now, that, to me, looks like a mass genocide event. Because mm -hmm. right? I was in a place last weekend where 10-year-old children have blood clots all over their gallbladders and they can't sleep at night uh, because they were forced to get vaccinated because they were Native American. And that hurt my heart. My heart got hurt last weekend. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of my 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 family, my blood, they they're getting hurt by these operations, and unfortunately, the Native American community didn't listen to the um, to the to our ancestors about the smallpox in the in the in the blankets and the things, and so we we fell as a Native American. The, my family and families have fallen for the vaccine thing, and and that was brought to us by Mr. Trump. So that's an unfortunate thing. Mm -hmm. um, I see the concept of a wall going up. A, a wall indicates division, separation, that we're dividing. Instead of building communication and being strong to, be, to not divide. So, you know, and walls have two sides. Mm -hmm. You know, if they ever get the thing completed, uh, good luck getting out. Yeah. R right? So this is a, a division thing. So I don't know Mr. Trump. I've spoken with his attorneys. I know how compartmentalized they are. I met with them in Mar Largo on in August 13th of 2001 uh, when I was playing at the, uh, Josh Howard. I play uh, basketball. I'm a basketball player. You may not know that, but it's playing. You are quite a tall. Game. You are quite a tall gentleman, aren't you? No, 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 not tall. Just, just know what I'm doing out there. I can handle myself. So, anyway, I, I went to Mar Largo because I was right there, Delray Beach. And uh, spoke with his attorneys in the U.S. Secret Service, and unfortunately, they're very compartmentalized. Um, they're, and I comprehend for reasons why of national security. And he's only as smart as his generals will educate him, right? So he's he's based he's going off of other people's education, and uh, unfortunately, because of Operation Warp Speed and the mass genocide event that is happening towards mankind, I cannot give that much aid because I look at Operation Warp Speed as a killing event that has happened to my, to my family, to, to, to lo people that I care about oh. right now. And so it's very sad. That's fair. That's fair. What about Operation Bluebeam? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, that's, again, another psyoper. Yeah. You know, I, 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 if you, do you have firsthand knowledge? Does the general public have first, actual firsthand forensic facts? I would say no that to that. Okay. So if the PSYOP guys are running the courts, the PSYOP guys are running the banks, the PSYOP guys are running the governments, do you think that could be a PSYOP too? I do would you think say would, so. Do you think that the governments of the world have any volition whatsoever 
to make you healthy, happy. So what is Operation Blue? Do you think Operation Blue Beam is that some kind of hope to make you happy? It isn't, from what I understand, and it's probably wrong, isn't Operation Blue Beam to kind of like bring about a fake alien invasion or the return of Christ to get people to, <clears throat> to their fake idols to bring about... I, you to know, get you're, into a new way of living. Well, the new way of living is to move into the paradigm of the now, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't look at, I don't really look at that as a, as a, as a fix, because it's coming from Operation Blue Beam. Operation being an adjective, again, an adjective um, being sand. We'll call it adjective sand, and blue beam because it's a pronoun or a no fact. Pro means no, so it's a no fact. Then we'll make it a sand hill. Well, so, so we're going to change the value of what Operation Blue Beam means now because it's only your adjective and pronoun you've given me. Okay. And we're going to call it sand hill. So when you're on a sand hill and you stack sand up real high and you go to touch it in the middle, what happens to the sand? Just all falls down. Oh, a sand hill, Operation Sand Hill. I mean, Blue Beam. I mean, Sand Hill. What are you trying to articulate here? Right? So if you can come at me with some facts that will stand the test of the five senses that we have in this paradigm, right? we're gifted with these senses, and it holds up, then I would say that, hey, yes, it has some stability. It's stable. Oh, okay. But since everything that you're saying here, as far as Operation Blue Beam, is based upon the protocols of a military that is... Are they chemtrailing you over there? Yeah. Oh, well, hey, hey, yeah. Bad, bad news. I got it going on here, too. Yeah. Right? Put put on by our good but old the, the, airports. The, the skies start off nice and blue. Then you get a couple of planes go over. And by mid-afternoon, it's gray. Yeah. So, so if, if the Air Force or Space Force is in charge of Operation Blue Beam, or Sand Hill, we'll just call it Sand Hill. We'll mm -hmm. Just call it what it is. And the Sand Hills go on, and you, you tell me it's got some validity, and then I look at what its performances, other performances are trying to do to me, and I look up in the skies, if there is a sky, mm -hmm. I look up in the sky, and I see people dropping these aluminum bromide follicles on me, which is harming everything below it, or creating a really nice ionization field for you know the the harp technologies right the weather modification technologies you know that then i i would say that you know operation blue beam or what i'd call the sand hill has some validity but until i see a leader a righteous general a righteous admiral stand up and have the guts to do anything for the people i'd say probably not mm. Mm. Oh, what would it be like to spend a day in your head, I'll tell you. Well, I, I just, <laughs> right now, I'm just very thankful for everything from day to day. I have to be thankful for everybody in my now space. I have to be thankful for those around me. I have to give to them the best I can. A shout and out to your to just, team. You have a very good team. I have a, I'm very blessed. I do have a good team. They've been supportive with me, and I'm a very difficult guy to work with because I'm frustrated about a lot. Mm. But I'm going to stay humble and neutral and just be – a flexion of of who I am and try to give as best I can and hopefully uh, get back in areas that, you know, I'm needing. And I'm just thankful for everybody that's come in my life. And uh, I wish them and their families blessings beyond blessings. And I wish I could do more for them right now. Um, there is with the quantum banking system, which we didn't get into, which I've created, there's no need for there to be a credit and debit system because there's so much wealth in the world that we don't actually have to mine it. It's just mindless, just on and on and on and on. There's just so much wealth and abundance here, and we live in a world of abundance. We have been being bombarded constantly by the chemicals that we're intaking and the medications that we've been forced to take. And so it's really sad to watch. But I'm going to stay positive. I'm going to stay happy. I'm trying to live a happy life. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to stay as happy as I can in a world that, uh, quite frankly, needs an overhaul and uh, needs to be fixed. And 
hopefully our message will get out to the correct people that can do something about us, put us in the correct locations to where we can fix the AI systems, maybe end the AI systems and actually put somebody that has righteousness in their heart mm -hmm. that will stand up for the benefits and the betterment of mankind. I you do know, we believe we, we're all put here at this time on this timeline for a reason. Yes. Yes, I'm very thankful to be here. Mm. I really feel like this is finally my space to shine. You know, a lot of people, because of the Operation Mockingbird, which is a, another sand hill, right? I've, I've been, you know, a lot of character assassination against me. But I've put forth a, a positive performance in what I've done, and I've done good things when nobody was looking. I've done the correct things when things are difficult, and I've given and sacrificed everything that I loved. And so that's hard as well. No, so. absolutely. Well, listen, I've really enjoyed this. Um, I don't really want to call it an interview because it's not really an interview. It's just been a really good chat. With, Dialogue. Yeah. 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 And so it's been a pleasure okay. to meet you. Um, yes. My kids are going to wake me up about six o'clock in the morning. And I know oh. you're a busy man. So thank you so much for coming thank on. You talking to me and my audience and i'd love to have you on another day another yes day. Uh, if you want to check out more videos of mine go to for yeah, the claim of the life.com at f-o-r-t-h-e claim of the life.com and that will get you kind of plugged into what we've got going on so thank That's you brilliant. and your audience I, I will put your um, links in the video description as well so they can just click on it and that'll take them to you hey thank you so much have a great space and you thank you very much and thank you to the team who helped put this together thank you guys blessings brilliant take care take care